Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you're a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Tradewinds RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Torque T333 toy hauler. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camp experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration. On your campsite, of course your awning. Need plenty of room for that to come out. On your off campsite, your slide. Kind of a shallow slide, but leave plenty of room for that to come in and out unhindered. Then leave yourself a nice walking space because the next thing I want you to think about is where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power cord is going to plug in right behind your rear tire on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And just ahead of the tires in your slide is where your water connection for the campsites will be. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook your hitch. First thing you do is level your unit. Power tongue jack here with a night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply retract to bring down, extend to bring up. Now should you lose power underneath this rubber stopper, this manual hand crank will bring this up and down if you don't have power. Speaking of power, check your battery post when you arrive. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. Once we got our unit level, next thing we're gonna do is stabilize it. Now your unit is equipped with power stabilizing jacks. Just gonna hit extend here. And as they come down, I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top. Just want to point out to you, sometimes these will come down together, sometimes one at a time. Uh, get your four pack of those jack pads with your 10% off coupon. Put them down on the ground. You may have to adjust your feet as they come down. And run these down just until they're taut. Remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. So once you've got these down and they're taut, you don't want to change the levelness of the unit as far as you want to go down. Again, remember these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You just want to stable your trailer. Turn them down the front. Show sure these rear ones working real quick. There's the rear, got all four of them down, got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Big long 50 amp cord here, plugs in the back. Now the way they connect now is they go in at a left angle, turn to your right and then put your black washer on, that'll lock it on. At the end of that 50 amp curt service, you'll have a dog bone in your convenience pack to go from 50 down to 30. And if you need to plug in a home, you can go from 30 down to 110 with this adapter. Just run appliances accordingly when running off 110. You don't want to pop a bunch of breakers. Got our power hooked up. I took up our water. City water connection is where we'll hook up at the campsites. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. Use this when putting fluid in here. Hook that up. Hook your hose up. Don't turn our hose on yet. Let's open up our hot water heater. Now this will lift right off here. All we're doing at this point, make sure our drain plug's back in there. Get some plumber's tape on there. Get it in there nice and snug. Then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. After your hose been on for a little while, go ahead, go inside, deploy the slide if you need to, for level and stable. And then to open up your water taps. After all your water taps are open and you got a nice steady flow of water going through them, 
shut them off, and then you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors. There is an on-off electric element right here. The only time you ever want to turn this on out here is if you're hooked up to 110. Otherwise, leave it just sit and turn it on indoors. There's also a reset. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Look to see if these are bubbled out. If they are, simply press them back in and then your pressure release valve. Now let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna go boondocking. Let's find your fresh water tank. Over here on your campsite, just left of your entry doorway is your potable water or fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply fill it up with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check your battery and black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water tank button. Once that's full, close that off. And when you want to utilize this water, turn on your water pump. Just remember, don't turn on your water pump when using city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up with power and water, ready to camp. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you around the unit starting here on your campsite. Big storage area here. You have some lighting and a battery disconnect. This will disconnect all the battery power to the unit. It'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. It's a hose that'll hook up to a spray port. Manual override for the slide crank. Power stabilizing jack. Your big awning, little porch light. That's a flue for your furnace. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of this and make sure uh, nothing's in front of it. It does get hot. Again, your potable water, your black tank flush. We'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. Cable, the cable and 110 out here, and an LCD bracket mount. So you can go ahead and hook the TV up out here. Separate entryway into, entryway into the garage. I'll show you underneath on this side. You have a couple of low point drains. There's your fresh water drain. And then below your fresh water, is gonna be your city or campsite water drains. This is a vent. You can push that out from indoors. Uh, bent out the garage if you got toys in there Your awning it's not all the way out yet, but if it is you pick the cables down that end starts to rain Pitch adjust pull down on that and that will send your rainwater down to this end Come Around the back of the unit we'll open the garage up here in a little bit. You are prepped for a fury on backup camera up there as well. On this side, just remove these cotter pins. This ladder will come out, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams on your roof and caulk as needed. This is your fueling station here. Up here is where you hook up your cable to satellite. And again, your power. These on the side of your slide actually help your wipers flip, flip in and out access to the back of your fridge that's a vent for your microwave more fridge your hot water here again there you can plug in that spray port hose city water connect extra fuel station this is not a storage compartment this is where you're prepped for a generator solar on the side you can plug in a solar panel right there and it'll trick to charge your batteries There's your batteries, your propane does come with a cover. It is on a regulator, simply lefty loosey to open. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look inside your unit. So the first thing I like to point out when coming in any unit is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camping with you Notice that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Coming to your right as you come in, just above your sofa, back here in the corner, is going to be your control panel. So here the rest is you can check your battery, brand new battery, fresh tank, black and gray tank. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water, your water heater if you're using gas, your cabin lights, 
auxiliary lights for outdoors, your porch light and awning light. Down here is your slide control and your awning. I'll show you real quick on your awning. You're only going to want to run that out until you get this flap to fall down to 90 degrees. Sometimes when they're moist, it takes a second to get that flap to fall down. There it goes. There it goes. You may have to run that in and out a couple times. So you only want to run that out until that you can see that black bar and your white flap is down to 90 degrees. That will extend past that. So keep an eye on it as you run it out. I'm actually going to run it back in here. It's a little windy out today. If it does get windy, folks. Remember to run these in. Lights, auxiliary lights, right above that. Sound system here, go through the different modes. Let's find F Bluetooth FM. And where possible, use time. Shift sound off indoors, front bedroom, and out back. Outdoors. To learn more. Nice system. Your recliners. Simply parachute pull. Go up on the handle that'll recline those. Up here is your remotes. One for your sound system, the other for your television. As I turn that on, continue walking through the living room here. This sits down pretty easy. Just unstrap that. Make sure you set your feet down as you're bringing it down. There's your television working. Shut that back off. Remote some more paperwork here. Your island here, you got one tens down beside here. You've got your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you are out boondocking, you don't have nothing plugged in charging your battery, use that battery disconnect if you're gonna be gone for the day to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. Underneath your eating area, back here is gonna be an access panel to your breaker box and fuses. And then for your furnace, 110 there. And over here on the wall is your thermostat. Let's go ahead and crank the air up real quick. All right, there goes the AC on. I'm gonna shut that off. AC shuts off rather quickly. Most units, the furnace takes a couple of minutes longer to shut off the fan does. Turn that furnace on. There that goes. I'm gonna shut the furnace off and you'll notice that it does take a few more minutes to shut off than the AC ones. Self-explanatory microwave up here. You have a light and a fan. The glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Put that light back on. Get a panel light, turn this to light, it'll turn from blue to red, hit your spark, and there's your flame. Same thing on the oven, turn this to light, hit your spark, no need for a pilot light anymore. Once it's lit, go ahead and turn it to the desired temperature. Your panel light, if you point it down, becomes an oven light. Your Dometic fridge, let's open that up to the inside and turn it on. Push that in, we're on auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Lift it up and you are on gas. If this light comes on, your gas is low. Pretty easy. Turning and going into your bedroom, bathroom real quick. I'm gonna turn our lights on. You have vent to open. And then turn on your fan. Put your fan off, close your vent. I mentioned this is where your 110 with GFCI resets at. And some plumbing to maintain. Back behind this access panel is your plumbing. See it's all PEX now. Keep an eye on that as you're traveling. 
we're going back into your garage we're gonna head up into the bedroom a couple things in here you do put a generator in there's where your uh, generator will start you can start it from the bedroom here individual lighting there you have a light switch for your top lights you have a hand crank open exhaust vent up there and you're also prepped for a TV back here this light in here will give you an accent light up top and then your individual lighting here when you travel I want to make sure that your doors are secure and let's head back to the garage as we do you do got, got the big carpet there that you can roll out and you also have a table that you can set up in between your seats here on the wall here is your own thermostat for back here Put that off. Now your furnace. Might be warmer than this in here. There's furnace. Shut the furnace off. Besides that, your bed control and lighting for in here. We'll do the bed here in a minute. You're also prepped for a TV back here. Bed control. Let's go down. I'm not going to bring you down all the way. Save some time. Let me show you a couple of things here. So as you get this down, you want to make sure that you pull back on this in order to roll this forward. That's all you do. Now, if you do want to use this as a bed, make sure you lower this bar. And just flip it up this way on both of these. So you have some extra support. So we've got the cotter pin system on this one. See your cotter pin right there. I'm going to bring our bed up. Once it's up, remove these cotter pins. That's going to go ahead and release this top bunk. You'll have one in each corner. Same thing over here. Just once this bed's up, pull your cotter pins. Let's run that back up. The table is set up in between. You see all your tie downs. Also have an extra fire extinguisher back here. And lots of storage. So once our bed is up, that's when we would go around and remove these cotter pins. After all four of those cotter pins are removed, when you bring the bed down, it will bring the top bunk down. It will stop just below this metal clamp here. And then your seating will continue down. All right, about covers everything in the garage. Let's go open up your ramp. We have these padlocked, of course. Let's a little safer with two people, but it is strut assisted, so one person can bring it down. Slowly lay it down. If you do want to use it for your ramp, remove your cotter pins and just stand these up. So set up your deck here real quick. Couple cotters to remove. That will stand up. This will swing out. Same thing over on this side. Remove your cutters. Let's 
Stand this side up. Once it's up, put the batteries back in. Swing this out. Again, put our top cotter pins back in to hold this top. And there is your ramp. Deck. You also have a screen door that you can bring down. Reverse the process to put all this back. Pins back through here. And close everything back up. Now the biggest thing with closing these, the easier is a two person job. You just wanna watch these cables as they go in so they don't get caught in the door. door up okay got a ramp closed back up let's act like we're leaving the campsite what I like to do is go in there and shut off my interior lights then I can walk around the unit and see any lighting I may have left on until our lighting's off doors and drawers Make sure that all doors and drawers are secure. Remember to make sure you have this one snapped back. TV on a swivel, make sure it's pushed back up against the wall and strapped in. Then we're gonna come over here. We can turn our interior lights back on so we can see what we're doing. And hit slide in. Doors and drawers, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's gonna impede your slide from coming in. Once our slides in, shut off our cabin lights and exit the unit. Pull the steps in. Lock and deadbolt your door. And turn your handle over. Unhook your water, your power, your cable, and bring up your stabilizing jacks. It says done. This side here will dump those low point drains. We're all boondocking. Pass this right here. We'll dump those low point drain. Then lastly, we'll come around to your hot water heater. Open up your pressure release valve. That's gonna dump the remaining of the hot water out of your hot water heater, just like so. Once that's done, push that handle back down. That way uh, your door will be able to come back on and then you can pull your drain plug. There'll be a little bit of water left in there. Hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump's gonna be just ahead of your tires on your off camp side or driver's side of your tow vehicle. Right there, 10 foot hose comes to your convenience pack. Hook that up and the first thing we're gonna pull is that black handle. Now if you pull that black handle, and it sounds like it's no longer draining, you can leave that black handle open, and at the dump station, take their hose, again with your water pressure regulator, and hook up to the tank, tank flush valve. Hook that up here, that's gonna be your black tank flush. Turn that hose on for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook that hose. Close that up, close our black handle, and then pull the gray handle. Maybe right to the left of it here. Once that gray handle's empty, 
You can go ahead and close that. That's gonna be cleaner water. It's your sinks and your showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Then you can store it in a nice sanitary and convenient place. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this torque for many years to come. Happy camping.